What's up summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides Wild Rift video. I'm Kangas and today I'm walking you through the only jungle guide that you will ever need for Wild Rift. So whether you're trying to carry through the position or just die less to ganks, hit that sub button and let's get right into it. To start off, champion choice is one of the most important things in the jungle. Currently, there's a few champions that are simply running rampant in the Wild Rift, and I'm specifically talking about Evelyn and Lee Sin. Both of these champions are absolutely insane at what they're doing. Lee Sin is great at taking over the game early, whereas Evelyn wants to get to her sweet level 5 and then take over. Knowing about their respective goals allows you to find ways to deal with them, because if you let them do what they want, they'll simply run away with the game. So let's start off with Lee Sin. He has almost undisputed strength in the early game and wants to use it to destroy his opposition from the get-go. The very first thing Ali Sin does in the early stages of the game is to run to the enemy blue buff and place a ward there. Then he'll return to his own red buff to start that. And it's not rare to see Ali Sin clear red buff and chickens and then wait for the passive growth experience to grant him level 3. Briefly after, you'll see him wait patiently close to the enemy blue buff until the enemy jungler arrives. And you can already guess what will happen if you don't realize that the Lee Sin is there. Yep, you're gonna die. And the worst thing is, once you're behind, he can do whatever he wants and you can't do a single thing about it. But don't worry, we got just the right tips for you. If your champion can't deal with early aggression, you might as well just rush towards your blue buff and place a ward in the brush next to it. Afterward, you're just going to recall and swap your trinket ward to a sweeping lens. Then, you're just going to start with your red buff as per usual. If Lee Sin or anyone else places a ward near your blue buff, you'll now see it on the minimap. Just pay attention and adjust your pathing immediately. If you see him go for your blue buff and he didn't kill his yet, don't flip the game. Take his camps and get to your power spike. Additionally, you might be able to make a play on that side since you know that Lee Sin won't be around. But for scaling junglers such as Evelyn and Shivana, they have a different goal in mind. Their strong suit isn't early aggression, it's their clear speed towards level 5. Upon reaching level 5, these champions are fully unleashed and can absolutely stomp through the rift, utilizing their ultimate abilities. For them, it's very important to avoid early fighters, as much as possible, because if they're behind, they'll find it really hard to get back into the game. This applies especially to Shivana. you do not want to fall behind on that champion. But to learn more about what champions are good and how to play them, make sure to check out our tier list videos too. We have ones for lower to mid elo, and one separately just for high elo. Just make sure to click on the right one for your tier, and enjoy some updates on the meta. And before we continue, I gotta remind you to check out the Discord in the description below so you can join the community. Also remember to sub the channel, otherwise you'll have really bad luck in your games. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Alright, next up, let's talk about the jungler's job. Here's something you probably haven't heard before. It's not the jungler's job to win your lane for you, or even to rescue you. You are supposed to at least hold your ground 1v1 or 2v2. However, it is the jungler's job to collect all the objectives on a winning side, as well as offering assistance to extend your lead. Imagine you're on a team with an Alistair and a Corky in Dragon Lane. This already screams, dive this lane. Don't miss out on these opportunities. They're super important if you want to climb. To fulfill this job, you have to be very active with your camera. Checking what is happening around you is one of the most important things that a jungler has to do. Your entire gameplay is based on information, and it's on you to get that information from the minimap. And don't forget, it's also up to you who you decide to put on the weak side or the strong side. The weak side is the side of the map that you're not planning to play around. As a result, that laner is going to have to own that side of the map. Their goal is no longer to carry, but just to survive. Think carefully about this the next time before you flame a member of your team. You can't possibly expect your laner to be super strong if you don't give them resources, while the opposing team is putting resources into that side of the map. On the other hand, there's the strong side. This is the side where you do plan to invest most of your resources and time. Consequently, you should expect this side to determine the game. And before we continue on with our jungle guide, it's time for our question of the day. What jungler do you fear the most? For me, it's just obviously Evelyn. I hate the fact that she's invisible once she hits level 5, and I just cannot deal with invisible champions. But let me know your answer in the comments down below. Alright, moving on, the very first time when you're going to combine matchup knowledge and working with the minimap is the mini objective in the form of Scuttlecrab. This little crustacean inhabitant is the reason for a lot of conflict in the Wild Rift. It spawns at 125 and is an objective that junglers absolutely love to take. That being said, you have to be careful if you're allowed to take it at all. Carefully look at your minimap. What information is or was available to you? Do you know where the enemy jungle is currently? And more importantly, how do your lanes look right now? You definitely don't want to fight at the Scuttlecrab when your mid laner isn't base and the enemy mid laner is still pushing, right? Instead, back off and don't grant the enemy a lot of free gold because you don't want to do something that you weren't allowed to. I know it sucks, but it's still better than losing the game for nothing. As a rule of thumb, you gotta ask yourself, can I enter the river without having to care about the enemy champions that I currently can't see on the minimap? And if so, why? 
Next up, knowing what lane to prioritize usually leads to getting more objectives. The stronger the laners close to the objectives are, the more likely you're going to get that objective. Nevertheless, you can't forget when you need to recall. All spawn timers are set in stone and can be played around. The very first dragon will spawn at 4 minutes exactly, and represents the first major objective that both teams want to fight over. Players on both teams want to base early enough to buy the best items that they can afford if they choose to contest the dragon. Keep in mind, dragons don't grant you superpowers instantly. They're going to grant you nice buffs that are complementing your stats, but they're not going to win you the game for free. As the jungler, you have to make the judgment call. Do you want to contest the dragon or not? Regardless of your decision, you must inform your team. And if you decide to not take the dragon, after that you have to find a way to compensate for that loss. For example, you could take down the opponent's first tower and gain a huge gold advantage. With this gold advantage, you could then try to influence the other lanes in such a way that you're guaranteed to be able to contest the next objective. However, it can also happen spontaneously that a team member gets caught unexpectedly. Then it's completely up to you whether you go for a steal or not. The most important thing here is that you always have an alternative plan at hand. You never want to be clueless and lose time. That is one of the worst things that can possibly happen to you as a jungler. And don't worry, some teams give away almost all dragons except the Elder Dragon, and they can still win. Compared to the other dragons, the Elder Dragon is by far the strongest. Not only does it give you a 50% stronger buff, it also gives you a damage over time effect that is triggered by both abilities and auto attacks. And one of the things that you need to think about in every role, but also in jungle, is proper itemization. Are you the one carrying, or are you just facilitating plays for your team? Depending on your answer, your itemization will need to change. Think about it this way. What are you going to do if your entire team is feeding and you're thinking about building full tank Lee Sin? I mean, what's going to change there? They're not magically going to start dealing damage, so it's up to you to carry until they can. On the flip side, it's also really important to remember that you don't need to go full glass cannon if your teammates are also fed enough to carry. Rather, look for ways to support them. A lock and enchant, a redemption enchant, maybe even a protector's vow. They're all valid options that you shouldn't forget about. I promise you, there'll be at least a few games where you needed to buy those items, but you didn't, and you lost, so be aware of your possibilities. Among the harder things for junglers is the acceleration and deceleration of a game. For that, you need to know what your teammate champions want. So let's dive into that. It doesn't matter to a Corky if you're going super late game, but it really does matter to a Draven. Similar to that, Evelyn doesn't really care if the game goes to the later stages, whereas Lee Sin does not want that to happen. Depending on their scaling, they're looking for different ways to speed up or slow down the game. Most of the time, you'll see a relentless aggression from Lee Sin players because that's what they want to do if they want to stay relevant. Evelyn, on the other hand, is absolutely fine with just taking camps and shadowing lanes where she expects Lee Sin to appear. She simply isn't forced to make a lot of subsequent plays. Oh, and by the way, shadowing describes a situation where your jungler is waiting in Fog of War close to you, while you're farming, pushing, or just baiting. A lot of enemies will think that this lane is easy prey if they appear to be isolated from you and your teammates. And this is a way that you can thoroughly punish overzealous movements by the enemy team. You can also do this as an entire team, but keep in mind that you shouldn't do that if Baron Nasher is on the opposite side of the map. The strategy is also super useful if you happen to be behind. The enemy naturally becomes more cocky and tries to go for a quick kill. If you can catch a shutdown by doing so, more than worth. Whatever you do though, don't be predictable. Catch the enemy off guard. And last but not least comes the most dangerous objective in the entire game, Baron Nasher. This buff is insane. It allows you to lay siege onto the enemy base without breaking a sweat just by buffing up your minions. Not only do they deal increased damage, they're also significantly tankier. This way, they're able to destroy the enemy base for you if you stay in range to buff them. However, taking down Baron isn't an easy feat unless you have a really strong marksman on your team. This big purple worm deals a ton of AoE damage that will absolutely destroy your team if you take too long to kill him. So, you gotta be wise if you're in a position to take him down, because if you mess up, it's most likely gonna be game. Being aced and losing Baron is almost impossible to recover from, unless the enemy team is trolling. And one final strategy that you can use with the Baron is if the enemy team is going for a dragon and you know that you can't contest because you don't have any vision, but you do have a secure path to the Baron and know that the enemy team isn't nearby, do it if your damage is high enough at least. Alternatively, you can also bait the enemy team that you're on it and wait in a brush to trap them, but never give anything for free. Now you can be the Diffy in the Jiffy. Overall, jungle is one of the harder positions to learn in the Wild Rift, partly because you directly impact every single lane, and also because your teammates will put a lot of pressure on you to get things right, or at least what they think is right. So the best piece of advice I can give for you if you're starting off in the role is to identify the best players on your team early on, and then play around them. But hey, let me know your thoughts on the jungle position in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to answer our question of the day. Also, a lot of you lurkers aren't subbed to the channel. You think we didn't see you, but we do. 
and it hurts. So help us out by leaving a like on the video and subbing to the channel. But most importantly, remember, best of luck on the Rift, stay hydrated, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.